Hi, welcome to this week's tutorial. This week we're going to be looking at the chord chart. So a chord chart is simply a sheet of music that highlights the chords that are required for individual songs. So it's really useful if you're unfamiliar with a song and you're going to be doing either a deck gig or um, going to a jam. It's also great for learning songs in the first place and they're really great for practicing certain things as well. But using a chord chart does require some chord knowledge, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to break it down so I can explain at least the basics of what you're seeing here and how to understand and follow a basic chord chart. So the app that I'm using is called iReal Pro. This is available on your Mac, on your iPhone, your iPad, um, your Androids, anything like that. It's available on most platforms. And it is a really useful tool that is widely used by musicians. It does cost, it's $12.99 on Android, I believe, and $13.99 on um, Apple software, but it is worth every penny. Once you've got the actual software itself, the charts are completely free and are completely unlimited as well. There is a forum where you can download almost any song you want for free. If it's a really rare song and the song isn't on there, the other thing you can do is you can contact somebody you know, somebody who's a good musician, who knows how to use iReal, and just ask them to pop the chart in there for you. It's quite an easy task as long as the song's not too difficult and doesn't contain too many chords. Um, and there will also be people who'd be happy to do this for, for payment as well if you really want a specific song. So it's an incredibly useful tool. So let's take a look at the interface. So the first thing you can see here is we've got the big window and the main thing you can see in the window is the chord chart. So this is the most important thing. This is what we're gonna be playing along to. And I'm gonna break that down into small pieces. Underneath the chord chart in the bottom right hand corner on a Mac, it will be slightly different places on your Android or your iPhone, but it'll still be here. You have a little button saying key and here is the key A. And if I come down and click on this here, you can see that all the keys are available and you can change into, obviously this is in a major key and if a song's in a major key, all the options will be major. You can't change major into a minor, that's kind of defies the point, but um, you can change it into all the different keys. Next along, we've got a little playback button. So this is really, really good for practicing a new song or doing certain exercises. So if I press play, you can see that it follows the chord chart along and you can just jam along to this. It's really good for learning new pieces, working on different exercises. As you can hear, it's not the greatest music in the world. It's a bit cheesy, it's not good for gigs, but it's fantastic for practicing. So the next button here, you have the tempo. And the tempo, if you're not sure, just means the speed of the piece. So the lower the number, the slower the piece, the higher the number, the faster the piece. The next one along is the number of repeats you want to do. So if you just want to play the song once through, fine, but then you can change it five times through, six times through, depends how much you need it. So there's also a few other little things you can play with on here. You can change the style of the song. So we're in a pop shuffle at the moment, which sounds a bit like this. But you can also select swing styles, Latin styles, jazz styles, gypsy jazz, anything you really want. There's loads of different options. You've also got a mixer, which you can remove instruments. So if you're a bass player, you might want to remove the bass and practice along to it. You can also change the tempo with the practice thing. So as it's repeating, you can set the tempo to increase each time. So start out really slow and the tempo will get a bit faster each time you go along. You can also do key changes. Um, that's for when slightly more advanced players, if you wanted to practice, um, you can just set it to change key each time. So your brain's going, oh, we're going up a minor third this time. Oh, minor third again. And you've got to really think about it. But this is when you come to slightly more advanced stuff. And there's also some practice things here, which are useful. So you can use guitar chords. And as this song plays along, it will show you the tab of the guitar chord. You can also do the piano chords. So it will show you how to play the piano chords. And there's also ukulele and chord scales on there as well. The next thing I want to look at is the most important part of the chord chart, the actual chords. I'm not gonna break down how to play the chords today. We'll take a look at that in a future video. 
But what I am going to do is to look at how the cards are written, what the symbols mean and how to follow the chart itself. So the chart we're looking at here is just a standard 12 bar blues. So if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know that a 12 bar blues has um, the chord sequence 1, 4, 1, 5, 1 or 1, 4, 1, 5, 4, 1. This one is the 5, 4, 1 variation that we're looking at. So to follow this chart, the first thing we have here in bar number one is the A7 chord. So the A7 chord is just made up of the A, C sharp, E and the G. So this is a dominant seven, not to be confused with a major seven or a minor seven. They have different symbols. So this is just the A dominant seven chord. This is then repeated four times. So this slash with the two dots, that simply means do the same again. So whatever was in the bar previous, that is repeated in the next bar. So as you can see here, we have four bars of the A7 chord. We then go to the D7 and that's repeated once. Back to the A7 and that's repeated once. Then we have the E7, the D7 and the A7, which is then repeated once. So I'm just gonna hit play on this and we're gonna follow this chart along. So don't forget, we're in the time signature of 4-4, four, four, so that means four beats to the bar. And the first chord we're gonna start on is the A7. So as we press play, we will get a four beat counting and then we'll hit the song. A7, four beats each time. Four beats again, staying on the A7. And then we move to the D7 for four beats and another four beats, back to the A7. And again, E7, D7, and A7 for four more. We're just going to take a quick look at the minor blues so we can have a look at the symbol for a minor chord. So you'll see the difference between the major and the minor. We have a little dash between the C and the 7 here. So that little dash is the symbol for minor. So if you just see a C and a dash, that means it's a C minor chord. But this one obviously is a C and a dash and a seven, which means it is a C minor seven chord. So another little symbol you'll find in chord charts is this little circle here. So we've got a C sharp diminished seven there. So the circle just means diminished chord. And if you have a circle that has a line through it, that is a half diminished or a flat five chord. You can also see on this chart, there's the little triangle here. So the little triangle means major and you won't find it on a normal major chord. So if you're just if you've just got an F major chord, you'll just have an F. But the major is there to denote that it's a major seven rather than a dominant seven. You will only find it with the sevens. So I want to take a quick look at this chord chart here. So this to a beginner is going to look like hell. And you're going to go, oh my God, there's seven flat lines and minor sevens and ah, it's all completely bonkers. And yeah, it can be completely bonkers, but it also can be quite simple as well. So if you're just starting out and you want to jam along with somebody and they bring something like this and you go, no, I can't do it, I can't do it. No, you can, you can do this. The only things you really need to look at as a beginner is the letter name. So we have an E chord followed by an A chord, followed by a C chord, followed by an F chord, okay? So the first thing you know is you can play those notes. And if you just feel like playing an E for four beats, followed by an A, followed by a C, followed by an F, that's completely fine. You can do that for the entire piece. And that is stage one of jamming with somebody who's a lot more advanced than you. Just play that bass note, that root note. The next stage, you can play the first and the fifth. So when you're playing the first and the fifth, the thing to look out for is the half diminished. This is the tricky one. So the first thing you're doing, so if you have an E half diminished, it's not the E and the B, you'll be playing the B flat in that key. And they're the only ones that you're gonna find tricky. So here you could easily play an E and a B flat, and then you've got the A and the E, and the C and the G, and the F and the C. So you've got an option there, you can play the first and the fifth. So play the tune through the second time, adding some fifths here and there. And you know, if you get to a half diminished and you're going, oh my God, what's fifth and a half diminished? Just play the root note. You know, play the fifths on the other chords, it's fine. And then the third stage in this is to play the third. So that's when you need to know the difference between the major and the minor chords, because the major chord has the major third and a minor chord has a minor third. 
So the next thing you'll be looking out for here. So you can still, again, you can ignore the numbers. You, know, you can ignore the flat nine. You can ignore the sevens. You can ignore all that. You don't need to know that for a basic jam with someone to have a little bit of fun with these chord charts. You don't need to feel completely out of your depth. And don't be embarrassed by not knowing everything, you know. You'll have your, your tunal instruments will be playing all sorts of crazy chords. And as a bass player, as long as you are following along and you are giving them a route to play to, they'll be really, really happy. They'll be absolutely fine. Um, so, and, and, you know, in a jam, it's supposed to be about learning. It's supposed to be about enjoying yourself. It's not supposed to be about being the most amazing musician and being in competition with everybody. So, you know, don't be afraid of chord charts that look like this. You'll often find charts where you have the chords following along, but sometimes you have a little line with an alternate chord underneath or an alternate note name. And what that means is that the chordal instrument will be playing a D7 here, but the bass instrument would be playing an F sharp. So do follow that, follow that the, at least the first note of that bar would be an F sharp because it it changes the feel and the sound of the chord, it changes the flavours of the music. Um, and if you've actually got that specified in your chord chart, do follow that because it adds a really nice colour to that music. So the first part of the chord chart, the first thing you'll see is the double number here. So this double number is called your time signature. Now this one is in what they call 4-4. Four, four. So the top number denotes how many beats you have in each bar. And a bar is just the difference between here and here, here and here, here and here. So in this case, we have four beats per bar. So in this bar here, you'll hear one, two, three, four. The next one will be one, two, three, four. And they're always split into equal measures. The bottom number isn't quite as important um, as it's quite obvious when you're listening to a piece of music. But if you want to get more into your music theory, it's good to understand what this does mean. So 4-4, four, four, the bottom 4 is what denotes the type of beat. So in your time signature of 4-4, four, four, the bottom 4 relates to what they call a crotchet, which is a one beat note. A lot of pieces will be written in 4-4. Four, four. You'll find it's probably the most common time signature. It can also be replaced by a, a letter C, which looks like this. Um, and that just means common time because it is the most common time signature you'll find around. You'll also find 3-4, which is also three crotchets per bar. So the next part we have are the bar lines. So the bar lines are literally just there to separate the bars. There's a lot of different types of bar lines. So for example, we have the double bar line at the beginning, which usually appears at the beginning of a song or at the beginning of a section. You have the single bar line, which is the most common and that just separates one bar from the next. You also have the thicker double bar line here. When you've got one thick and one thin line, that usually signifies the end of a piece or the end of a section. So this bar line here with the two dots, this one is called a repeat and they most often come in pairs. So all a repeat means is you're going to go back from this repeat back to the beginning repeat. So the first time you play a tune, the beginning repeat bar here, all that tells you is that you're going to have to repeat this section at some point. It doesn't mean do anything right at that very moment. So here you would play through this part of the song and you'd keep going until you hit the second repeat bar. When you hit the second repeat bar, you go back to the first one and play it all over again. There are also first time bars and second time bars. So this is what a first time bar and a second time bar looks like. And what this means is when you have a repeat in place, the first time you play the phrase, you will play the first time bar. So in this example, you'll play the C, the G, the C and the F. You'll then see the repeat bar and you'll go right back to the beginning where the B flat starts. You then play the whole section up to the first time bar line. When you hit that first time bar line the second time through, you miss the first time bar out and you go to the second time bar. So in this case, you go straight to the C, the F and the B flat repeated. And you'll then see you have a double bar line, which signifies the end of a section. 
Here is another example of the repeat bars with the first and second time bars. So as you can see on this one, the first and second time bars, there are only two bars that you play differently. So for this example, you would play through the tune all the way up to the repeat. You go back to the first repeat bar, go through the tune, and as you approach the first time bar, you don't play the first time bar, you replace it with the second time bar here, and then continue on to the B section. So on this chord chart here, you can see at the bottom there's some text that says DC al fine. All that means is go back to the beginning and carry on the piece until you reach the fine part, which is up here. So this piece will be played all the way through the A section, all the way through the B section. There are no repeats, so that's just how it goes. And then the DC al fine means go back to the beginning and carry on until the fine, which is where you finish the song. So the standard format of that song would be to play the A, the B, and then the A once again. So another thing you'll see on this chord chart is you have an A section and a B section, denoted by a capital A in the top left-hand corner and a capital B in the top left-hand corner down here. Now what that means, there's a two distinct sections of this song. And as much as a lot of the time you'll play the A section followed by the B section and finish, that might happen. But other times you might have the A repeated and then one of the B sections. Sometimes there's a C section. So what you'll find that in jam situations or where you have um, a band with a band leader, um, they might play around the song a little bit and they'll use these letters to tell you where you're going next. So you might be coming to the end of one section and the band leader might tell you to repeat the A or might tell you to go to the B section. Um, and that's just a good way for you to follow um, when you're in an improvising situation. So here we're getting a little bit more complicated. This is a third type of repeat called a coda. Now a coda is a different ending. So it will be, you will, you'll be playing a tune and as in this piece, you may have a first time bar, a second time bar, you may have a few repeats. Um, but when it comes to the very final ending, you've got a different section, a different chord sequence that will finish off the song. And that's signified by a coda. So how to use this? is to follow the song through as normal and completely ignore any of the coda signs. So the coda sign is this little circle with the cross through it. And we're gonna ignore it. We're gonna play through the piece as we go along. We're just gonna play, we're gonna do the repeats. We're gonna do the first time and second time bars. We're gonna do the C section. And then we get to this end part here where we have a DC al coda. What that means, we know the DC already means go back to the beginning. So we're gonna go back to the beginning and we're gonna play it until we see the coda sign. When we reach that coda sign, that's where we're going to stop and we're going to jump to where the other corresponding coda sign is, which is most often at the end of the piece. And we're going to finish the tune with that little section there. So hopefully that's explained chord charts in a nutshell. I hope you got something from this. Um, if you've got any questions about this video, please do comment below or any requests for any future videos, again, comment below, drop me a message, anything. I'm always happy to answer the questions. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and keep practicing. Mm -hmm.